Hello and welcome um, to our webinar today. I'm your host and moderator, Samantha Franklin from Spectrum, Spectrum UK, um, which is part of AdVision. Thank you for taking the time to join us today as we talk about IPCL fake lens technology and we'll do a couple of case studies. Today, our goal is for you to leave with one, a deep understanding of IPCL technology, two, indications of use, and three, how IPCL can provide a solution for patients with high errors and those unsuitable for alternative refractive procedures. We've also got some news for you at the end of the session, so stay tuned to learn more about it. And to make sure that we're helping you as best as we can on IPCL, we have a chat box for you to ask questions. We'll also have polls and questions which will be launched at various times. Feel free to drop um, questions on the topic or share your experiences in the chat box and we'll answer your questions at the end of the session or during our Q&A session at the end together with Herman Bianchi and my colleague, Dr. Tobias Otter. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Herman Bianchi, corneal refractive surgeon from Dr. Nano Eye Clinic in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He is our international KOL who has performed more than 30,000 anterior segment cataract corneal transplant laser myopia and hyperopia surgeries and has over six years experience with IPCL, monofocal and presbyopic with over 1000 implantations. He will cover the following, IPCL technology, the differences between IPCL and other phakic lenses, together with patient IPCL case studies and surgical videos. But let's get started. Over to you, Herman. Hello. Thank you for your invitation. I'm so happy to be here and I will try to do uh, in my best way, my best English. And I want, today I want to share my experience about IPCL and the things that I do every day. And I will start with my To share my screen sorry wait a minute and thank you for all of uh, all of us to join us uh, I'm waiting a minute please okay yes well thank you for joining us is our first IPCL webinar it's just an introduction about the technology with patient case studies stu studies um, yes i started years ago with the ipcl and i continued with this lens because i feel really confident really confident with this uh, fake lens inside of uh, my patient and my patient also are happy and well this is one of the reasons because i continue with that and well, we start with that IPCL. Well, what? Its characteristics and when IPCL is the best choice and how I do the, this procedure. Um, the main characteristic of the IPCL, I, I will start with that. Uh, it's an a posterior chamber implantable fake contact, contact lens. Uh, made it by care group from India. There is four model, spheric, toric, diffracted, and diffracted toric two. And uh, it's to correct myopia, hyperopia, stigmatism, and presbyopia. I use uh, this lens for myopia, stigmatism, and presbyopia. Not so much for hyperopia because the anterior chamber sometimes or the angle is not. Uh, so good for this uh, kind of surgeries. And well, here we know we have some hydrophilic polymer with 26% of water. I don't know if you can see the pointer, um, but it could be useful is the pointer is C. Um, this is for yes, me. Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is for me one of the most important things uh, we have uh, 13 models between 11 to 14 uh, millimeters, increasing by 0 0.25 millimeter steps. And this is very, very good because 
one of the most important thing after surgery but that we don't know before surgery is how is the bolt and with these things we reduce the risk to have a high or small bolt after surgery um, another important thing is that we have some um, scotopic pupil uh, with more than six millimeter we can customize the optical diameter of the IPCL. The standard is from 5.75 to 6.20 and we can see here the different standard size of the optical diameter and also the different size for this lens. Well, another important thing too is this lens has seven holes four in the periphery and two in the upper part and one in the middle and all of this lens when are, this lens are toric is made in especially for each patient and this is very important too and also uh, this lens has six optics and this is haptic is important to make very good stability in the sulcus this place it, th this uh, optics uh, give to this lens very, very, very good stability too. And uh, the angle between the optic and optics uh, avoid the excessive bolt in two. And the the optic, another important thing of the optic is very thin, less than uh, 75 micras. Uh, and this uh, have some spring effects uh, in this optic and reduce also the friction in this part of the eye. Another important thing, these polymers are manufactured very slowly and so they are stronger and their shapes don't change uh, for, for years. Also, the light scattering for this design of this central hole is less than 10% and the neural adaptation is uh, it could be better for this kind of patient. Well, another main characteristic is easy to uh, load in the cartridge. Always, we uh, I uh, load the lens in the same way. We need to put these notes in the proximal part of the cartridge and this node to the end of the, the cartridge in the right side and this part on the left side and this two hole goes always in the upper part of the eyes always in the upper part just in the left eye or in the right eye this picture is like if I am like operate this patient and I always put the lens between 0 and 180 degrees it's important we don't need to rotate this lens if the lens are toric like this lens these are diffractive diffractive spheric and diffractive toric but always this lens we need to put 180 degrees to 0 always in the same way if you don't understand something please ask me Another thing, when IPCL. Our patient with this kind of problem with high myopias, uh, we need to do always many pre-op studies. And also we need to do the post-op follow-up. It's very important for this kind of patient because the high myopia sometimes ha could be, uh, have some problems. And also we have some inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria for these patients. Inclusion criteria. Well, the normal inclusion criteria is myopia more than minus 6 to minus 20 dioptrias. This is the normal. But some patient with the thin corneal could be uh, able to do this surgery with less than uh, minus 6 dioptria. Yes. In, when the patient has something corneal, we can do this surgery if everything is okay for this patient. And, but what happened with patients with more than 20 dioptrias, minus 20 
diopteria if possible yes but we need to have some uh, acd anterior chamber more than three sometimes 3.3 3.4 because we need to introduce the lens and we want to have a very good central bolt but also peripheral bolt uh, we need to have some peripheral bolt in this patient and you know the the thickness of the ipcl in this uh, kind of patient could be uh, thicker and another thing is when i have more than one diopter of astigmatism i correct with the toric ipcl i have two inclusion criteria more when i have some keratocono but first if the first thing for me is uh, destabilization of the keratocono with uh, cross-linking or with the corneal rings and after that i start to study this special patient and sometimes this special patient has a big acd but sometimes uh, not very good angle iridocorneal angle and we need to study especially this kind of patient and uh, another important thing for me is a uh, is a new indication that i did years ago from three years ago more or less a little bit more four years ago with the uh, diffractive ipcl when the patient has uh, myopia and need this kind of surgery and the patient has more than 40 year olds i try to uh, put this lens the diffractive ipcl because the patient want to correct the far side vision but also they want to correct the presbyopia and it's this is the only one around the world that can correct the both far vision and near vision and exclusion criteria well, when we have less than 2,000 cell by millimeters, we need to take care with this patient. I prefer don't do this sur the surgery in this kind of patient, the anterior chamber less than 2.8. I prefer if you start now with this kind of lens, start with 3.0, but well, it could be okay uh, more than 2.8. Of course, basically with cataract, uh, history of glaucoma or surgery of glaucoma or retina we we need to study it a little bit more and i prefer don't do the surgery in this kind of patient and also with corneal disease no well i repeat this but we need to study in the preoperative and also in the postoperatively because we need to know how are our patients not just before we need to know how is the evolution in the next years. I found this and I think it's very good to, to have uh, some uh, summarize. The, we start with the slit lamp examination, the A surface, the, the pupil, and we want to know how is the eyes, but after that we with the topography or pentacam, white to white, ACD, keratometry, if the patient have some corneal ectasia too, UVM to, to know white to white, angle to angle, sulcus to sulcus, ACD, uh, also the optical biometry to know the axial length, white to white, the angle of the eye, of course, is very important because we, with this, uh, with the fake lens, uh, that we use in the posterior chamber uh, with this surgery we reduce a little this angle and we need uh, that this patient have an open um, open angle and also we can study with gonioscopy uvm and also we need to know how is the optical the optic disc and retinal evaluation of course why because this patient are with uh, high myopia and we need to know if the, this patient has uh, some degeneration in the periphery or in the macula and of course to obtain the size of the lens we need to to do several measurements and the this goal the, the this uh, measurement 
we need to uh, submit in this form and well well now we start with with the different measures that I do every week with my with my team the most, the most important is the white to white measurement the white to white horizontal white to white uh, the corner diameter between the limbus uh, 0 degree to 180 degrees it this is uh, one of the most important things and we can do that with different ways the different ways as ah, the the manual calipers is uh, I started with the manual uh, calipers years years ago and I do this surgery uh, from another posterior chamber lens with a manual caliper too and also with digital caliper I think it could be useful just to to know uh, to compare with another optical measure and I think that one of the best is the IOL master I use every in every surgery and I always take an account that and we can see here uh, the the different measures in in this part and um, well I think it could be very useful too the UVM is also important to know the white to white the OCT I is another important device to to have this measure but I don't use for this kind of measure Pentacam 2 Pentacam give uh, to us uh, two different measures uh, with uh, cornea and without cornea without the pachymetry and we need to sorry this is for the um, I confuse with that the diameter of the cornea we have here and we need to compare with another measure and also we have the sulcus to sulcus and, uh, and we do that with the um, uh, ultra microscopy and well I think it's very important because uh, we put the lens in the sulcus and we need to know how is the anatomy in the sulcus and we need to have uh, some doctor or some technical doctor that do this study and always do the same uh, because we need to know how is uh, the sulcus uh, before surgery and of course after surgery the, this uh, diameter measure uh, is is very important too not just for this me measure also is important to know how is the anatomy of the sulcus the angle to angle is important because the angle to angle is near to the to the same of the white to white that we take with another device but is the, the distance between both angle, angles between 0 and 180 degrees okay another thing the anterior chamber the anterior chamber depth well it's important uh, and I take this with two or three devices to just to know how is the anterior chamber and we always take between the corneal endothelium and the arterial capsule of the crystalline lens this is important to know know between the epithelium we need to know how is between the endothelium and the anterior uh, surface of the crystalline lens and we recommend always more than 2.8 millimeter for the IPCL more than that pentacam 2 the anterior chamber the, we can see here the anterior chamber with epithelium from the epithelium to the anterior uh, surface of the crystalline lens and from the endothelium we need to know this distance this is very important the IOL master Two, the iron master gives to us from the epithelium and we need to subtract uh, the pachymetry if we have just this measurement and I, I tell you before that ultraviolet microscopy is very important 
not just to know the measurement of the uh, sulcus to sulcus, it's important to know how is the sulcus. If we have some cyst here, here, and we need to study uh, 300 degree just to know how is uh, this um, this this the the, the, the sulcus because sometimes there is some something the most common is the the cystic but we can have another thing here and we will put the lens in this place. The complementary study is the endothelial count and we need to know how is the endothelial and I said before more than 2000 and of course how is the different cells in this case. Summarize anterior chamber, optical device, iron master, pentacam or mechanical as a compass or ultrasonic UVM uh, from endothelial to, to the anterior surface of the crystalline lens. If the measure method includes the corneal thickness, you have to subtract the pachymetry. Uh, more preop evaluations. Well, cornea, we talk about uh, endothelial cell density, corneal central thickness is important too, intraocular pressure, pupil, pupil diameter is important too, the ocular motility is important. We need to know how is the ocular motility of this patient because uh, sometimes uh, some of these patients have some uh, amblyopia and we need to know how is the ocular motility. The ocular surface of course is important too. Uh, this kind of lens don't change the surface but if we use some diffractive IPCL, we need to know how, how is the surface before surgery. The peripheral retinal evaluation, of course, and also the macula and the optical nerve, and the refraction. Another important thing, we will try to treat uh, refraction, and we need to know how is the objective, subjective, and I think the most important is the cycloplegia to select the IPCL. And when the patient has more than minus 15, I think the cycloplegical refraction, it is the most important. And we need to take in account the cycloplegical refraction. But when the patient has less, we can choose different, the cycloplegical and the subjective refraction. But always taking account the cycloplegical refraction. With that, we never confuse. And the post-op, the follow-up, we need to check and control efficacy, the visual acuity and the refraction, and some satisfaction questionnaire is too important for this patient. And because with this kind of surgery, always these patients are, are happy we change their life with this kind of surgery. And it's important to know how they are feeling after surgery. And we need to take care too, but we need to know how is the IOP. We need to know if there is some change in the crystalline lens. We need to know how is the endothelial cell density. And also if we have some astigmatism after surgery, we need to know how is the bolt one of the most important things after surgery. OCT, of course, to know to the, the ball too with this study. Well, the ball, I, I, I really think that you know, but it's the space remain between the IOL and the crystalline lens. Uh, minutes ago, a minute ago, I told you about the central ball. This is the central ball. This is very important, more, than 250 but in this case it's a very high myopia more than uh, 25 i think it, this is the case with minus 30. i need to know how is the peripheral bolt and it's very good it's very good i i need to have a very important anterior chamber and i have it in this case a very open angle because this lens is uh, is thicker in this part well, 
everything is important. Oh, this is some study that I made it years before. Uh, the average between the white to white of the IOL master and the diameter of the IPCL. I have some average, and the difference is uh, 0 0.76 of difference. All of the patients are near to in this place 0 0.76. But well, it's important. And <clears throat> I made some study because the uh, the medicine without um, science. It's, it's not medicine. I think it's very important to put all my all my patients together and present how uh, were my result in this surgery. And I present that, and you can find this in PubMed. This is the results: a prospective uh, case series study of 100 consecutive IPCL surgeries began in November of. 2017, and I study all of these things, spherical equivalence, corneal and endothelial cell density, thickness, and IOP, and also the bulb. And you can see here the results. The endothelial cell density just reduced 2.9% uh, at six months. The CCT was near to the same, and the bulb was very sta stable after surgery three months and six months and i continue study near to the all of my patients because sometimes there's some patient that didn't come to the consult but i have uh, my secretary that, that always called them and she want and i want that everybody of every one of my patients come one once a year to control and also, the IOP was stable, the baseline one day and six months after surgery. And, well, it was important to correct not only myopia, it was important to correct the cylinder too. And this is a little more about the result, this, the refractive result, that it was very, very good. And how to perform the surgery? Um, the surgery some surgical techniques I will show you. This is the the OBD that I use when I use. This is uh, methyl cellulosa with the ocucot, and I put the lens inside of the can of the cartridge with the this notch in this place. The other notch are in this place. It's like a, a common plate. Uh, IOL. This is very easy to charge, and I always control before I start the surgery that the IOL is in the correct position inside of the cartridge. Could you see well the videos? Could you tell me if you want to say something or ask me something? Be when I show the video, you can do that. We can see the video well, thank you, Herman. If anyone has any questions, if you just want to raise your hand and we can answer them at any point. And we see here the optics in this part of the, the, the surgery. Always we need to, to have the, um, the optic in this place. And after I load the lens, the IPCL in the cartridge, I start with the surgery. I put the IPCL under a little bowl with the BSS, and after that I start the surgery. I put the, I made the first incision with the bilance with, with 20 gauge, and after that I made the second incision, the main incision with 2.8 millimeters, and after that inject the lens inside of the anterior chamber, and. We, need, we don't need any special device to accommodate the lens inside of the posterior chamber. I used to, to use uh, some uh, irrigation cannula of the irrigation aspiration by manual cannula. And I use that and I just reduce 
I, I started to, to move the viscoelastic uh, when I accommodate the length, when I put the length behind of the iris. And, and it's very important always to, 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 to wash the, um, the OBD because uh, we need to take out all the OBD. We need to wash in the central hold and of course under the lens. And I put some antibiotic cefuroxima in the cornea, irrigation the cornea. Uh, another surgery I made this yesterday just for this meetings, for this webinar. Always accommodate, the, put the lens inside of the cartridge like uh, any IOL like pla plate and after that I, I start to move the lens to the end of the cartridge and I always want to see these uh, both um, optics are in the correct way inside of the cartridge. I use uh, this OVD and well, I think you don't need to put a lot of OVD just to, to, to put full in, in, in the anterior chamber just to maintain the, the position of the anterior chamber. And in, now I, I made the main incision in the temporal part of the limbus. And after that I inject inside of the arterial chamber and the lens is open inside and well I think it's very uh, nice uh, and confidence lens inside of the eye and after that I again I start to 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 put the lens behind of the iris and I start to use the irrigation just to to clean the OVD and well this is uh, important because we need to 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 take out all the OVD. I think that with this irrigation color is very useful to 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 clean the OVD from the central hole. This cannula has two open hole uh, and it's helped to, to clean the very well the the the, the viscoelastic and also uh, behind of the the lens I, I move uh, up in, in the 90 degrees and 270 degrees to to clean the the OVD in the, that way. Well, and this is my own technique that I use. I I don't use uh, OVD, but don't do it at home. I say that. Uh, start with OVD. I use OVD always, but I have very good result too with without OVD. I present this technique in, in many places, and I have very very good result too. And um, I inject inside of the anterior chamber. This is the real time of surgery, and just I put behind. Uh, of the iris and in the sulcus uh, it's just a surgery but I think that the surgery that you need to, to start to do is with OBD just to feel confidence with that and okay this is the the highlight of ophthalmology that I present to this uh, surgery this is another important study that I present this year. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yes. I have a lot of experience with ICLs. Um, yes. What do you have also experience with the ICLs? Yes. So what yes. the main difference between the both lens? I think the, 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 the big difference between the both lens is the, the size that this lens have. have. We have 13 models. With, mm -hmm. with with this lens, and um, it's uh, it's difficult to to have some wrong bolt after surgery. I think 
that this is one of the most important things. The other things uh, is the attic is, is very good. You can improve uh, also the, the optical diameter, but it's not the most uh, common thing that we do. The most important, I think, is the, uh, the diameter of, the, of this lens. And I feel more comfortable inside of the eye. Maybe it's a little bit uh, stronger than ICL, but the model V1, the model V2, I think is near to the same. Mm -hmm. And the biomaterial of the lens is the same or is made very different? The biomaterial of the lens, uh, well, I have near to 1,000 surgeries and I just, I have one cataract in all of my patients. Mm -hmm. um, you have the equivalent of the aquaport in the central optics in your lens? I, sorry? Excuse, you have the equivalent of the hole in the center of the optic like uh, in the ICL? I think that the first model, the model V1, uh, mm. This model don't have the central hole, but the new model has the central hole. I think it's improved a lot with this. Yeah. Uh, be because uh, before of that, uh, with some vacuum, when the, uh, like this, the, the you, you know, the, we don't have some static bolt, we have some dynamic bolt inside of the eye. Yeah. with the crystalline bolts. And without the central hole, I think uh, it, it not was a very good idea, but with the central holes improve a lot. I, I don't have yeah. any problem with this. I agree completely with you. Just another question. Did you use also the insight from Dan Reinstein, the very high frequency ultrasound with your reference point, which you can, uh, you have a, a software we can calculate exactly the vaulting and the sizing of the lens? Which watch? I, I sorry, excuse me. Could it's you, the Ar oh. it's the inside. It's the Artemis, which is a very high frequency ultrasound with a reference point that you can reconstruct the posterior chamber exactly. No, and this, he has issued a software to to measure the vault exactly according to the lens size. Okay, but it's nice. Okay, okay so uh, you 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 switch from ICL to to your lens, so IPCL, or you, you, you do both methods? I started just to try six years ago, but now I am just use IPCL. Because okay. I like, when, when uh, the IPCL started with the model V2.0, I just choose IPCL. Okay. Because I have the same result, it's very effective. I have more size and also the, the, bio, uh, the, the material is very good too. And uh, well, mm -hmm. I think it's very useful and it's... Uh, and in, in terms of price, it's the same price? Price is another thing, but I think it's not the most important thing because we have young young patient and we, we need to, to have a successful result. And it's important, but I think that, that the most important thing is the bio, the the material is very good, and we mm -hmm. have. Oh, I have more security for the the, the post-operative bolt. I understand. Thank you for your advice. Thank you. No, thank you for asking. Me. Well, this is the the dynamic parameter. Uh, we can see here. I made this uh, study with two years of follow-up and it was lower than 100 micras. Um, the, the movement of the, with different light condition, no? You see here how it's moving. Uh, with different light condition, uh, it was, uh, and I think could be better if we have near to 100 micras uh, of bolt after surgery to take an account to change the length for uh, one size more. Um, well, another important thing is that our reversible surgery, this is important, uh, we can replace to avoid more problems. I have here 
a patient with um, okay with some uh, IPCL rot are rotated and I need to move the lens. I will show you how I move the the lens. I put some OBD behind. And when the, the optic are near to the main incision, I, I start to, with the same OBD cannula, I put it's not a detail. <laughs> it is not with addition, I'm sorry. But well, I think it's okay to, to show how I try to put in the main incision and take with the this cannula and after that because the hole in the optic is very useful for, for this scene and I take out I don't introduce any scissor inside of the eyes and anything and after that I inject the lens with a little size little uh, bigger size no Okay, another surgery is a little with a little acceleration, uh, just to know how I move the lens near to the main incision. I take with the uh, OBD cannula, and after that, I take out with the Mac Pearson or another device that we have to. To take out, and after that, I introduce a new lens, just in, in the same surgery, and that's all. Okay. Mm. Well, I don't know if we have time. I would like to show you in in this way how we choose how I do the surgery in with two cameras i don't know if we have we do you can see very the the video or no okay The lens are moving always the same inside of the other chamber. The lens uh, is open uh, up to down in the different way of the ICL. And after that, I the same surgery just to see with the both cameras. It's no more than that. And this, uh, this is an diffractive IOL. Hi, I'm Natasha. I had intraocular lenses implanted the day before yesterday, left eye, and the right eye the, a week before that. Um, right now, my vision is very good. I can see from a distance and also close by, very, very sharp. Um, I don't see halos, I don't see anything strange, uh, I just do feel I have to adapt to the new situation a little bit, but uh, my vision is very good and um, I used to have myopia, negative 4 or 5 more or less, and I use glasses and contact lenses, um, so right now I'm, I'm very happy I don't have to use them anymore. Well, I, sh I show you that because she was with more than 40 year olds and I used uh, some diffractive IPCL and I can control not only the myopia, I can control also the presbyopia for this kind of patient and it's very useful. Um, well, uh, this is my conclusion and I think it's a very good uh, intraocular IOL and I use it because I have very good results. If not, I I I I don't use this the, the lens that I don't like it.
equal? It's a nice question. How likely are you looking offering IEPCL as treatment option? Okay. Now I have some something to show you that is similar but not equal. Uh, which one is the difference? I think that I told you before the big difference is that five model, certain models. You can choose certain models. I think minus 18, minus 30. I think that I treat a lot of patients with more than 20 diopters. And if you take care with the measurement in the pre-op, it's very good option too. 25, 23, I have a lot of this kind of patient. And with just one surgery, I can reduce the myopia too. And the, uh, also, there is another word that state that is uh, the anterior surface uh, is roughness. Uh, the roughness of the anterior surface is less in the IPCL than in the ICL. The difference between the central hole uh, is very thin in the, in the center. The optical is very thin in the center. It's just 80 micras and always uh, increase the, the thickness from these micras. And we have here another important uh, study that said that is similar uh, in efficacy and safety, the ICL and the uh, IPCL, and also is uh, economical, most economical the IPCL. But well, I think it's not so much important. I don't know if we have time, I have two cases. I think, uh, well, the first case is a girl with 28 year old. Uh, she want to to stop to wear contact lens and glasses. Uh, family with high myopia. She use contact lens and she has some papillary conjunctivitis and surgery of estrabismus. I told you before that we need to study uh, if the patient has uh, the movement of the eyes and she also has nystagmus. Um, this is the finger count. Uh, the best corrector visual acuity was uh, 2025 with the correction uh, and finger count without and the best corrector visual acuity was 20 80 with some amblyopia in this patient and um, well the iris, the pupil, the fundus was uh, normal and this is the refraction of this patient minus 6 with this astigmatism and um, this is the endothelial cell density, the OCT, you can see here uh, the right eye, uh, 12.8, the diameter, diameter of the cornea, and we can see here the anterior, the ACD, without the, without the pachymetry, 3.32, I think it's very good, it's okay. The other eye is the same corneal diameter in the pentacam, and here, the, the other eye, the uh, left eye is near to the, the same. And also the biomicroscopy we study uh, is near to the same, the anterior chamber depth that we take. And angle to angle, just to see, uh, sulcus to sulcus was near to the same to another measurement. And um, well, we can see here a difference 12, I'm sorry, and 12.8, little difference uh, between some studies. I need to take into account the different measurement, and sometimes I take uh, another uh, study. I choose 
this model, uh, 137, 137, taking account the, the pentacam, the ultra microscopy, but for the right eye, uh, I have some doubt and I prefer uh, don't take in account the eye master for the right eye. Well, I need to know how was after surgery. This is the refraction after surgery. This is the ball with me uh, in a scotopic pupil and with photopic pupil. And it was the same in both eyes. You need to do many measure always for all of these patients. Don't just do one, do many of them. And it was the bolt in, with the OCT after surgery with the different scotopic, mesopic and photopic pupil and the visual acuity after surgery was very good for, for the right eye and for the left eye for, it was uh, a little bit better but this eye was with um, a little of amblyopia a strong amblyopia but improved a little uh, after surgery and she was happy with the surgery the refraction also was good and the endothelial cell count was near to the same to the pre-op. This is the UVM and the case number two. This is uh, another female, it's 34 year old. She wants to stop to wear glasses and contact lens and the, visual, the best correct visual acuity was in this case 2100 and for the other eye was uh, 2030 and after surgery improved a lot it was with minus 12 and minus 175 she for the right eye and for the left eye has a little less astigmatism everything was normal also the OCT in this patient what we can see here uh, have the bar I can see okay now yes uh, the angle is it was open the diameter of the pupil I always uh, take in account all of these things the anterior the ACT was good without pachymetry and well it's good option everything is go good also here the ACD is in Spanish sorry because my machine are in Spanish here the uh, diameter of the corner was 12.2 the pupil was uh, 3.87 and we can see here also the same measurement of the left eye with open angle and the ACD2 3.12 of the uh, pupil and 12 of the uh, corneal diameter also we can see here all this measurement and here we can see in the IOL master the same measurement in both sides is comparable with the uh, another measurement that the pentacam to we don't have very good here uh, count of the cell uh, the the cell density for surgery but it's more than 2000 uh, we found here some microkystics in 360 degree it's another important thing and the sulcus to sulcu was a little bit less than the another measurement that it was near to 12 and the sulcus to sulcus it was 0.5 less 
And well, I decide to take this uh, IPCL, the model B2, with near just 0 0.75 more than um, the IOL master or the another measurement. And well, I show you this because it's important to know everything. This is the bolt after surgery is more than I expect because I know that this patient has 360 degree of microcystis in the sulcus. But well, I choose 0 0.75 like an IOL master, but the another important thing is the UVM said to me that is less than IOL master or the pentacam. And it's important to take an account also how is the anatomy. I think it's not only important to know the measurement, it's important the anatomy, how is the anatomy. And well, I saw in this patient is 12 of myopia and with astigmatism. Uh, we see here very good bolt in the center and also in the periphery. It's another important thing. And it's, he, it's patient, uh, this patient has very good anterior chamber. I, I can put with a little bit more of bolt this patient. This is the bolt with the OCT in the right eye and also in the left eye. And one month later, the visual acuity was uh, 2015 in the right eye. This patient had hamblyopia in the right eye, but the left eye was with very the dominant eye. No, uh, this is the refraction after surgery. I think it's very good. And well, well, my conclusion about that uh, about this uh, IOL, I think is. It's a very good option. I think uh, I have a very good result. Is because I use, um, I I never have. Uh, I have just one cataract after surgery with the model B1, but uh, with the model B2 until now, I said uh, I hope to continue with this. Uh, lucky, but I don't have uh, this problem. Well, thank you for all of us and if you want to ask me uh, something or everything that you want to comment, I open to, to listen and answer. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Sorry to have you another question. Um, do you have experience with the uh, hyperopic IPCL? Does it exist? I, hyperopic, I, I don't use for hyperopia. I just use for myopia and I have experience in emetropia patient. Uh, I put some diffractive IPCL uh, for emetropia patients, emetropia patient, and it was uh, with very good result. I think for hyperopia, uh, we need to have, uh, and it's not common to have a high ACD and a very good open angle and I think that uh, with the maybe in 10 years this patient has uh, less uh, uh, not, not to don't have to a, a, a better angle this patient has a, a worse angle after this time no Yes, I understand your, your fear, but uh, how do you manage the patient who are uh, 27 years old and have a plus seven both eyes? What do you do for surgery? Sorry? It's, it's, it's a difficult patient. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> it's a difficult patient. I know. If this patient has a very good uh, ACD, I take into account this kind of surgery, but it, it needs to, to have this very good ACD or an open angle too, but sometimes it happens and sometimes no. I, you know that the refractive surgery is not for this kind of patient, no, plus seven. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes, but we, we need to, to have 
space inside of the the eye to to use this, this lens. Yes, but those patients who have space and open angle who yes. can afford the lens, you you have to do something for them. But they are very demanding, and I they are very. Yes, I think is is they have uh, we can use. Uh, I, I I think that the hydrotomy it could be good also with the central hole that this kind of lens have no i think uh, it could be a good option to do the sun so the, the, the iridectomy is mandatory in those lenses yes. because yes. Uh, you don't have a central hole for hyperopic uh, ipcl so I, may the, i may i just sorry may i just add on this, this is to be an author from uh, advision product manager so the hyperopic uh, ice ipcl also has a central hole up to the power of plus 3.5 diopter yes, so it is available but, until plus 15 and yes. uh, you, you you can get it with a central hole in the low powers yes but for the high powers you have too much side effect with central hole due to the thickness exactly. of the lens you see. Okay. exactly exactly mm -hmm. Okay, I know, thank I know you. That there is this uh, central hole for the hyperopia plus than 3.5, but I also prefer to make some hyradotomy in this kind of mm. patient. You are a wise surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, no, well. And um, Herman, um, Simone Suta also has a question for you. Now, I, I was just interested in the first case. Um, if after an amblyopia is corrected, if you see any chance of an improvement, maybe with eye training or I don't know. Um, no, I think that the improved vision after surgery is because it's the, the, the IOL is in the nodal center of the eye and improve the, the image in the, in the retinal, in the macula. Okay. It's bigger imagine. I, th I think it's improved just just w because of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, could I ask a question as well? Yes. Uh, have you ever uh, tried to implant uh, this kind of lens inside the eye that the anterior chamber is less than two point eight? And uh, no, no. No, I never. Okay. No. I, I have some patients that. Just if you if you have. If you have 2.76, uh, 2.78, I have some of this patient, but no, no more than that. I, I prefer don't do this kind of surgery. Yes, I, I say no to this patient. Uh, I prefer to, to have a very good result and no uh, some pupillar uh, block after surgery because uh, when you have some of the problem, it's a very big problem for these patients. And I think it's not very good option to, to have some pupillar block after surgery. No? But you pointed out something interesting because the most important thing is not the anterior chamber, it's the angle measurement. The angle, yes. The angle is the very, an very important. It's yes. the most important. It's more important than the anterior chamber, you see. And, and also, with, with, if we have a patient with keratocono, uh, we, always we have a very good an ACD, but uh, the angle is not always yeah. very good. Yeah. The anatomy of the sulcus and the angle and the, everything that we need to use in the surgery is, is, is mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. So I have seen a patient who has uh, got a uh, ICL upside down, you see, and that's provoke a pupillary block, and that's provoke also a Uret Savaya syndrome, which is uh, very devastating. So, uh, yes, yes, so yes. it's a, it's a big warning uh, to see how to manage the <laughs> implantation. Anyone want to have uh, uh, some of this problem? When I change ICL to IPCL, I have. For ICL up, 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 upside down, <laughs> and I was uh, I don't know because when the ICL open inside of the anterior chamber is in the different way, you know, it's open like that, and if uh, this uh, the yeah. upper, it, it could be rotate inside of the anterior chamber, and the IPCL 
uh, don't rotate inside of the anterior chamber. It's open in the different way like that, and mm, you can't it's open like that, and sometimes rotate yeah. because yeah. touch the anterior surface of the crystalline lens and rotate inside mm. of the anterior chamber. Yes. Thank you. No, welcome. Okay, does anybody else have any um, questions for Herman or for Tobias, our IPCL specialist for AdVision? Well, I have a quick question to, to Herman Bianchi regarding the, the press biopic one. Uh, you, you, you mentioned this is, um, as you said, in, a new option um, to be treated with fake lenses. How do you select or how do you choose the near edition as you have also here um, with this um, custom-made IPCL, um, the, the complete choice from uh, plus one to plus four diopters of addition. How do you select which addition you give to your patients? It's a very good question. When I start with the diffractive IPCL, I don't have idea how I choose. And I start to study and study and study because I, I, I was thinking that it it could be the very good option for the presbyopic patient with myopia. And now I think also is the very good option for the emetropic patient to, to correct uh, the presbyopia. I choose in different way. Uh, I have a, another presentation for that, but I tell you that I choose in different way. The first thing is correct the far vision. The, the best correction, the best visual acuity for the far vision. And after that, I start to choose a different uh, addition for the near vision. I prefer if the patient tolerate the different addition between right and left eye. I prefer to put uh, the most addition that this patient tolerate in the dominant eye and I just add to another eye 0 0.5 or one diopter and more. Uh, maybe if the patient has 50 year olds, I choose two or 2.5 in the dominant eye and three or 3.5 in the non-dominant eye. Uh, I, I call this like a blend and after surgery, uh, the, the, the patient feel very good. And I think that in this way, in this way we can correct the presbyopia. No, just by now, we correct the presbyopia for the next maybe 10, 15 or 20 years. And depend on the age of the patient, if the patient is 40 or if the patient is 50. And I think this, this lens, uh, when the patient, if the patient now have 40 and, or 50 and in 10 years is 60 uh, year old and this patient could be read very well uh, for near vision and also intermediate vision because have a blend in both eyes, no? And with more addition for the age uh, of the patient, no? I don't know if I am clear with that. I think it's clear. Thank you. Okay. If the patient don't tolerate the same, the different addition, I put the same addition in both eyes, but the most addition that this patient tolerates. Uh, I know that if the patient has uh, maybe uh, minus 10 or minus 12, uh, this patient tolerates minus 3.5. I think it's, uh, it's very good for the high myopia, the very high myopia, to correct with the most addition that the patient tolerates. Also, if the patient has 40 year olds. I have some, in, the, in Pub, you can find that in PubMed. I have some article, you can uh, find, uh, write just Bianchi GR. And I, I have some uh, in, in PubMed and it mm -hmm. could be good for I have just a question. Till what age do you implant the IPCL? Sorry? Till what age do you implant IPCL? From one, one uh, okay, from 21. 
Gil, the oldest, the oldest. The oldest, 53. 53-year-olds. Mm. Without cataract, without uh, um, any problem with the vitreous. And I think that the, when the, the vitreous detachment is... Uh, it's in the, in the eye. We, you can do also the clear lens extraction, but if not, mm -hmm. I prefer to to put uh, the IPCL, the fake lens, inside yeah. of the eye because it's good for the this kind of patient. You know that the myopic, the, the patient with retina with high myopia could have some detachment of the retina, no retinal detachment. Yes, but you think that the uh, IPCL will be cataractogenous higher than 55 years old? Or? No, I, I no, I think when I, I have patient with 53 years old with two or three years that I made the, the surgery and they are very, very good with and uh, without cataract. No, okay. thank you.